you look at these buildings on this block and those buildings on that block, what looks different? Exactly. The, these buildings were built much later. They were built in the 1950s. Uh, and then these buildings were built in the 1920s. So you can't really see the details, but you know, if you want to come up, you're more than welcome to. Um, this, these two blocks were supposed to be a park called Center Park. Okay, and it was going to be on one end of the park was going to be a courthouse. The other end of the park was going to be um, a fire station, library, and so forth. So you were going to have this green space, almost like a Washington, D.C. situation, where you would be able to you know, separate the downtown from everything else. But when, uh, when retail started maturing and uh, they started demanding more space, you know, think about it, back in those days, it was just mom and pop shops and local shops. But then, you know, Sears came along, J.C. Penney's and all this, and they needed a larger place to go and they threatened to leave. So they decided to let them build here. So uh, this, this became J. Fred Johnson's, which was uh, formerly down the street, of course a local store, eventually purchased by Miller's, and this was J.C. Penney's located over here. And then you had other, like the Woolworths and the Crories and things like that. Um, the Kingsport Inn, uh, I always wondered why I couldn't remember that. Uh, everybody I talked to me like, oh, you remember the Kingsport Inn? It was actually torn down the year before I was born. Uh, but that's how passionately people felt about the Kingsport Inn. Like we're still talking about it, you know, 50 and 60 years later, okay? So when it went down, the reason it went down was uh, Miller's department store in Knoxville wanted to come to the Tri-Cities. This was going to be their first location, so they agreed to build at that location. But then they bought out J. Fred Johnson, and they decided just to take over J. Fred Johnson, and it wasn't needed. So my entire memory growing up as a kid was that's where you parked, and then you walked down Broad Street to go do your your uh, Christmas shopping. So if you look down this direction and you see the City Hall, the 1960s building on the left, envision, if you will, there was a large Tudor style building that was the YMCA library and, uh, and the City Hall. And being a true corporate town, um, you know, Kingsport didn't really have a City Hall for the longest time. It just kind of used space wherever it could because you know they were still trying to figure it out as they went because they were building the town from scratch it didn't just evolve over a long period of time uh, i'm told that inside that uh, that building they had a retractable floor that was similar to what you see on it's a wonderful life you know with the pool underneath it so does anybody can anybody verify that does anybody remember okay well we'll say it's true then how's that <laughs> okay next i think it's also neat that uh you know clinton mckenzie who was the architect was kind of fascinated with the tudor style so really the Tudor style carried all the way down Shelby Street and then some of the other, um, what we call Park Hill now, the 50s and so forth. Um, the parking garage sat as a vacant flat lot for the longest time uh, in my adult career, but before it was the downtowner in the 1960s. And so uh, I would call that the original Meadowview. Uh, folks used to talk about that. That was the place to go, the place to meet, the place to, there was a restaurant on the first floor. That's where a lot of the discussions took place as to what was gonna happen in the future of Kingsport. Um, it, it, you know, I got to see that be demolished and then uh, fortunately also got to see it be replaced by a uh, parking garage and then with now living on the second floor as well. Um, and so when we started talking about planning for these kinds of things, uh, the folks that came in and were giving us advice said, you need to find some of these places where there, like I said, there was a tooth knocked out of the smile of Kingsport at the church circle. You need to find those kinds of spaces and then infill those back with appropriately scaled buildings. So that's what we did with the parking garage. Just as a, um, I'm trying to infill some of these kinds of things because we're not gonna be able to go down there obviously, but um, you know, I, I think back on my time at the city and how, you know, when I'm reading stories now about Hilton Head, South Carolina. Hilton Head, South Carolina is 40 years old now. And guess what's happening in Hilton Head? They're having a big discussion about their architecture's out of date and their infrastructure's out of date and all this kind of stuff. And I started thinking, you know, Kingsport, built in 1917, add 40 years, that's, that's when you become a real city. When everything's shiny and new and it's not as hard, but when you have to start remodeling is when it becomes very difficult. And some of the original assumptions like the Kingsport Press uh, had changed. And so um, it was, 
the, the folks came in and took a look at it and called us up and said, you know, we've done an official assessment and we have determined that it is worthless. So we are willing to give it to you for a dollar if you'll accept it. And I wish they put a little bit of higher price tag on it because when we came back and pitched it to the Board of Mayor and Alderman, they said, what are they trying to do? They're trying to, they're taking advantage of us. There's something there, you know. So uh, we, we had to go through all the environmental uh, uh, assessments and so forth to make sure that they weren't, you know, trying to slip one in on us. And so, uh, but we were able to acquire that. And then, you know, sometimes you just kind of think there must be divine intervention. But uh, a guy drove through that was going to the Bristol Motor Speedway for a race, and he was from Murfreesboro, and he said, hey, I'm a demolition contractor. I read something that you bought this big building that you're not know what you're going to do with. And uh, he said, if you're not in a hurry, um, I can take it down and pretty much pay myself from the recycled material. And so uh, we said, you know, we thought, is this, re is this legit? And so we, we let him do it, and uh, he started skinning it away a little by little, and then uh, I, I witnessed John Campbell talk to every single person that walked into his office for any meeting for any purpose and say, do you have any interest in the Kingsport press site? Do you have any interest in the Kingsport press site? And I'm like, John, is this the way this gets done? And I thought I thought there needed to be something more formal, but sure enough, we had some local investors step up and, and, uh, and then we also had Food City step up. And so we were able to take what was, uh, you know, once a very important um, publishing company, a lot of jobs, and rather than let it sit vacant and deteriorating like like you see like the Benberg plant for example in uh, in Elizabethton it has sat my whole adult life like that it could have sat like that for a very long time but it didn't and we were able to put it back into production so uh, if you remember there was a railroad track right down the middle of Clinchfield Street we had the building uh, the walls came right up to the sidewalk the windows were painted silver shut so you couldn't see light for air raids during World War II uh, and then across the street you had uh, just uh, there was a lumber yard and some other things but the trains right down the middle of the street I remember trying to figure out how you were supposed to straddle it because the driving lanes and the rail lanes didn't line up so next so this is today and uh, of course town park lofts and then the chamber offices and uh, carousel park the farmers market is uh, original it's the old Holliston Mills uh, they left that as is um, the what's that it cost $60,000 in 1926 to build yeah okay fantastic so we're, I'm glad we were able to save that because I think it's always interesting when you go and see other cities were building farmers market and in Johnson City, for example, and it looks pretty much like the Holliston Mills building that was built in the 1920s. So we were able to salvage that, and and that has become a community gathering place for a numerous events. So let's move on to the next. Thank you.